Hello YouTube! I just come back from the top of Jingmai Mountain and I've got two bags of fresh leaves. Once the tea leaves are picked, uh, you shouldn't keep them piled for, for a long time because uh, they tend to oxidize. So you can see here that the leaves have released a little bit of moisture and, and they are quite warm, I would say. They, they might, must be about around 40 degrees now. We're gonna let them cool down a little bit. I have spread those fresh leaves on a bamboo mat just to let them cool down and release a bit of their, of their moisture. I'm gonna put them on some uh, bamboo baskets, large bamboo baskets like this. I'm gonna put aside two baskets of uh, seven kilograms of fresh leaves. And we're gonna monitor the water content in the leaves throughout the process. All the weight losses will be attributed to water evaporating. We're gonna spread those fresh leaves on the on the boji, on the bamboo basket. So it's the leaves from harvested in the morning and we're gonna process them in the evening at about seven o'clock, seven or eight o'clock. So I want to have uh, some thickness so that the, the withering is not too fast. If you put a thin layer of leaves, the withering is uh, faster than if you put a thicker layer. Uh, we're gonna give it like five hours of withering. We don't want them to wither too fast. If the tea is withered for a long time, the leaves might oxidize too much and it will give a red and poor tea. Some people like this kind of taste, but it tends not to age so well. So generally we want to give uh, three to six hours of withering depending on temperature and how thick the layer of leaves is. As you can see here we now have our 14 kilograms of fresh leaves stored here. During the withering they're gonna lose water and we're gonna weight them again at the end of the withering. So the main goal of the withering is to prepare the leaves for the shatching, for the kilgram process. As you can see now, the leaves are still very turgescent. If I take a leaf like this, it holds straight up. And after the withering, uh, you will see that the leaves turns flaccid. And that will make the kilgram process much easier. If there's not enough withering, uh, there will be a lot of burnt leaves during the kilgram process. And it will be hard to really uh, reduce the leaves like we want them to. It's now 8 in the evening. After five hours of withering, you can see the change in the leaves. You can see that now the, the leaves have lost some of their turgescency and they are now ready for shatching. Mainly you know when it's ready by touching and smelling the leaves. So let's get back to our experimental batch of fresh leaves. Initially there were 14 kilograms of fresh leaves. Let's weigh them again and see how much water has evaporated. If we put the two batches together, we originally had 14 kilograms of fresh leaves. And after five hours of withering, we now only have 10.8 kilograms of leaves. So now I'm besides the wok. It's pretty hot. We're going to do the shatching now. Let's go. Okay, so... The goal of the shatching or kilgrim process, the main goal is to inactivate the enzymes in tea responsible for oxidation. We're gonna heat the leaves and that will destroy the enzymes and the leaves will stay green forever. But in the case of, in the case of poor tea, they won't stay green forever because the temperature will not be sufficient to totally inactivate the enzymes. This is the specificity of poor tea. This tea can oxidize slowly after it's been made in the factory. Unlike most of the other teas, which are kind of stabilized when they come out of the factory. So here I'm doing the shatching in a wok by hand. I could also do it in a machine. We'll talk about this in another video. In Jingmai, a typical shatching session goes between 12 and 20 minutes depending on the style you want to give your tea and the initial raw material the conditions the conditions of the leaves and so it's important to wither the leaves well 
that allows them not to burn in the wok. But if the weathering time is too long, the leaves will have lost too much water and that could impair our ability to make a good kindling process. If the main goal of the shatching is to inactivate the enzymes, it's not the only goal. The second goal is to let water evaporate. Obviously, since you heat the leaves a lot, water evaporates. Water evaporates from the bottom of the wok and the steam that results will heat up the leaves above them. In the wok, the heat is transmitted to the leaf through, through two mediums. The first one is the hot metal of the wok, which transmits the leaves by convection. And the second way the heat is transmitted to the leaf is the steam. Through the way I move the leaves in the wok, I can control how much steam evaporates and how much steam stays in the, in the tea and heats the leaves. The third effect of the Kilburn process is to modify the structure of the cells in the leaves. And you, you're seeing right now that the leaves don't have the same texture, the same consistency as they had when I put them in the wok first. When I'm doing the shatching, I can control two things. I can control the speed at which I flip the tea over and I can control the intensity of the fire. The, the way the Kilburn process is done will have a huge impact on the taste of tea. Basically, that's the, the major determinant in whether you get a greener for tea or a redder for tea. So basically, if I use a high wok temperature and a short cooking time, I will get a rather green for tea. Uh, the emphasis will be on the floral side of the fragrance the bitterness and astringency will be more obvious and generally you'll get a more aggressive tea. If I use a lower temperature and a longer cooking time, I will get a redder poor tea, which means it will have a more fruity fragrance and it will have a better mouth feel. But maybe it will lack that kind of bitterness and nice floral flavor that some people like. Many people say Jingmai tea should have that orchid fragrance and this fragrance is quite obvious when the tea is processed in a rather green way. If the tea is processed with a low wok temperature, it will more likely have uh, a honey fragrance. In any way, there's a window of wok temperature and cooking time in which uh, that poor tea is considered good, in which uh, the poor tea will age well. If the, if the wok temperature is too high, the tea you cook will turn into green tea. It will have a very good fragrance in the first several months after its production, but it might turn out to be quite nasty after a couple of years. It will develop a strong and unpleasant bitterness and basically will taste like an old green tea. If the wok temperature is not high enough during the shatting, not enough enzymes will be inactivated and in the following weeks the tea will turn red. When you're brewing tea, you can have a look at the tea stems. In many teas, the, the tea stems are red while the leaves are green. And this is perfectly normal. This is just because the stems are thicker and will take more time to heat than the leaves. If you process your tea in a redder way, uh, you might have red stems. If all of your tea stems are red, your tea will have a reddened taste and it might have problems during aging. So now we're closing in towards the end of our shatting. So I use smaller moves. In our tea factory, we like to start with a heavy fire and in the middle of the session, we tune down the fire so that the leaves can get a nice finish. So you can see that the leaves are changing color as they are getting drier. And we're gonna check this just after finishing this batch by weighting the tea again. Okay, now you can see the leaves are ready, so I'm going to take them out of the wok. And we're going to go to the back of the factory. Come with me, bye. So yeah, this is our factory. And I'm going to put those leaves down here for you to see. So right now, the leaves are quite hot. There's a lot of steam inside. I'm going to let those leaves sit for a little while here, maybe 30 seconds, in order for the steam to condensate and preserve a bit of the water content 
in the leaves. But we don't want to keep it too much like this because it's important to let the tea leaves cool down quite quickly after the shatting. So now I'm going to just open them here on the bamboo mat so that the heat dissipates. And now we're going to process our second batch of leaves and I'm going to meet you again after so that we can wait the tea. Second round made by you by my wife. And here is our second batch made by you by which weighs 4.8 kilogram minus 1 kilogram, so 3.8 kilograms of tea after the shatting for the second batch. So our first batch only weighs 3.8 kilograms right now. So now we're going to collect our two batches, put them in the bamboo basket, and we're going to go on the next step, which is rolling. Here is the rolling machine. So we're going to put the tea in. So we, we've got our two batches which represent 14 kilograms of fresh leaves. We put it in the rolling machine. Put the lid on top of the leaves and start the rolling. So we're gonna roll it like this for five to 10 minutes. The purpose of the rolling process is to break the surface cells, especially the cells from the stems. If you don't break the cells, the remaining water will not come out easily and that will be a problem during drying. Along with this water, the tannins which are inside the leaf cells will come out. They will stay at the surface of the leaf and when you will brew the tea, they will be readily available. If you don't roll the tea, you will have to brew it for a very long time before you get any flavor out of it. So the more rolled the tea, the stronger it will be in the first infusions. But if it's too rolled, it would be detrimental to the stamina of tea over several steepings. The rolling process also contributes to the shape of the tea. We could roll the tea by hand like it's been done traditionally, but this is one of the cases in which the machine does a much better job than the human. Rolling this tea with heavy and consistent strength is very hard to achieve for a human. So in this case, the machine is much better. Okay, so now we're ready. We're gonna open the, we're gonna open the trap below and let the tea come down. And that's it. You can see now that the leaf has a different aspect after the rolling process and we're gonna wait it again to see if some water has been lost during that rolling process. Right now the leaves smell very good. You can also see that they are getting a bit darker. Originally we had two batches with for a total of 14 kilograms of fresh leaves and right now we have 8.5 minus 1 kilo for the basket. We have 7.5 kilograms of processed leaves after rolling. At this point, the leaves are still wet. They're gonna spend the night in the factory. And during this process, a bit of oxidation can occur. I remind you that the kilgreen process was not as strong as with green tea, and some of the enzymes are still active. After the rolling process, the tea juices have come out and the enzymes are all over the leaves. So, we can expect some oxidation during the night. So generally, the greener poor teas are processed in the morning so that they don't have time to oxidize during the night. Most commonly in Yunnan, the leaves are processed in the evening. So here the thickness also has an influence on the tea. We're gonna wait this tea tomorrow morning and see how much water it has lost during the night. I hope you'll have a good night. We're gonna continue processing tea. See you tomorrow.
Hello, it's now 7.30 in the morning on the next day and now we can see how the tea has changed through the night. We're gonna wait our experimental batch again and see how much water it has lost during the night. And now we're at reading 7.7 .7, and that means 6.7 kilograms of tea. And now I'm gonna spread this tea on a on bamboo mat. We'll let it dry under the sun and we'll collect it again in the afternoon. Um, by that time it will it will have sun dried. So here of course I shouldn't spread too thickly otherwise it might not dry. But with the strong sun we have in early spring I can still put a decently thick layer of leaves and it will dry. Actually, if the layer is too thin, there's a risk that the tea over dries and if the tea dries too much, it might turn too green. So it's still important to keep a little bit of moisture in the tea. So I'm gonna spread this and I'll see you in the afternoon. So it's now 5.30 in the afternoon and our tea has dried. It's time to collect it. So let's see how much tea we got. So when you collect the tea, uh, you have to check if it's dry enough. So to check this, you just take a bit in your hand and press it. And it has to be very crispy. You know, if I press too hard, I will break all the leaves. In lots of cases, the farmers collect the tea leaves and they are not uh, dried enough that might cause the tea to turn really bad because it can turn moldy the oxidation will not be stopped so especially the stems might turn red yes you have to know that uh, if shaching stops most of the oxidation in poor tea processing actually the fact that the tea is dry is uh, what slows down uh, oxidation most um, and that's why if you store the tea in a wet environment like Hong Kong or Guangdong uh, the tea will age much faster, basically because it has a because the tea will have a higher water content. With this tea, we'll assume that right now the water content is five percent. Depending on where you store it, it can go from two percent to ten percent. But uh, I think above seven percent, mold can grow. So you have to be careful with how wet your storage is. You can also see in this tea. Uh, there are a lot of yellow flakes, what we call huangpian, those green leaves that stick out of the mao cha and they are generally not enjoyed by the customers for uh, their bad look. Most of the time we sort them out uh, and sell them as a different product. Sometimes they are fermented for shu cha or they are pressed as huangpian and people enjoy them after a couple of years of aging. So this batch is made from 14 kilograms of fresh leaves. The bag weighs 200, 200 grams and that means in total we have 3.5 kilograms of tea. And here it is. This is how poor tea is made. Now I'm back at the tea table with the tea we made in the Gaiwan. So you can see <coughs> it has a golden color it wasn't processed to green. Of course the leaves are very green because it, it's, it was processed on, on the same day. And this tea will evolve a lot in the following days and following weeks. As you can see on this diagram, the water content decreases at every step of the processing. The processing method is designed to achieve three main goals. First, dry the tea by reducing the water content at every step. Second, alter the structure of the tea leaves. This is done during withering because you want the leaves to become soft and flaccid. This is done during shatching because you can clearly see the difference between when I put the leaves in the wok and when I take them out. Then during rolling the goal is to break the surface cells in order to extract the tea juice, especially the ones uh, which are in the stem. So you can see that after rolling the stems are broken. <coughs> And of course the third and final goal of poor tea processing is to put the oxidation reaction to an almost complete stop. The enzymatic activity is almost totally stopped 
but not completely and that will allow the tea to age over the years. Just keep in mind that oxidation is stopped mostly because the tea is dry and not because most of the enzymes are deactivated. For example, it's, it's possible to stop oxidation without deactivating the enzymes simply by drying the tea. This is what's done when we make partially oxidized Yunnan black tea, but that's for another day. That was poor tea processing. Thanks a lot for watching and following our YouTube channel. I hope you'll put a lot of likes to this video and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.